morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Now is the time for faith to pray, for fun, and to play. Stand up. Do a dance. Learn something new. Take a chance. Bring, Bring your, your Bible. Bible. There's, There's so much to do. Enjoy this special time. May just for you. Thanks for joining Kids Kingdom with the New York City International Christian Church. Let's sing to God. Building up the kingdom, building up the kingdom, building up the kingdom. Thank you so much for joining us again for Kids Kingdom. I am so excited to do our very next craft. Now today we're going to see a story about a big fancy dream that a king had. And so I wonder if you've had a dream before. You have? I bet it was a really great dream. 
So we're gonna be drawing something from a dream today. So I have four things with me. I have a black piece of paper, I have a white piece of paper, I have crayons, and I have my trusty marker. Now you can draw with anything that you have around the house, but we're gonna start with our white piece of paper first. So, you're gonna take your paper tall ways, and we're going to draw three small circles from the corner. So we're gonna start with the very smallest one, and we're gonna get a little bigger, and then we're gonna get a little bigger. Those are my three circles. Now, I have to draw a big dream cloud that takes up as much of the paper as possible. So we're gonna draw little half circle shapes all around the edge. Now I have a dream cloud. Okay, now in this dream cloud, the king dreamed about this fancy statue. Now I'm gonna draw a statue, but you can draw anything that you dream about. And with my statue, I'm gonna start with a red crayon. First I need, yeah, a statue needs a head. So I do a big circle of a head. That looks really cool. And we're gonna continue on to give it a neck and some shoulders. Really nice, you guys. Now, should my statue have strong arms? I agree. That is one strong arm. Now he has two hands. Okay, I'm gonna get a new color for my statue. Let's try some orange. Now my statue has two legs. I think I'm gonna do a new color for the feet as well. Ooh, how about blue feet? That looks like a very strong statue to me. So now we have to color it in. And now my statue is colored in. And I know what you're thinking. We still have this black piece of paper. So here's the best part. You know what you're gonna do with it? You're gonna crumple it up. I know, crazy, right? Now, this reminds me of something that I find outside. Yeah, a rock. Now later you're gonna see what to do with this rock. So when it happens in the story, follow along. Enjoy your dream statue. It's story time in the Old Testament. Two years after rising to the throne of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar had a terrible dream. This dream frightened him so much that he couldn't sleep. King Nebuchadnezzar, in anguish and desperate to learn what the dream meant, called in all the wise men known to him to see if any of them could interpret his dream. The wise men came before King Nebuchadnezzar and asked him to tell them about his dream. But the king refused. King Nebuchadnezzar demanded that the wise men first tell him what he dreamed and then what the dream meant. The king declared, If you can do this, I will give you great rewards. If not, 
I will have you put to death. In disbelief of the king's request, the wise men said, King Nebuchadnezzar, what you ask is impossible. No one can do what you ask. Only a god could tell you your dream. This made King Nebuchadnezzar so angry that he ordered that all his wise men be put to death, including Daniel and his friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When the king's chief soldier, Arioch, came to capture Daniel, he asked Arioch what was going on. Arioch explained the situation, and Daniel went to King Nebuchadnezzar to ask for time to interpret the dream. The king agreed, and Daniel hurried back to see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego so that they could pray for God's help. That night, God revealed to Daniel the king's dream and its meaning. The next morning, Daniel went to Arioch and said, Don't execute the wise men of Babylon. I will interpret the king's dream. When Arioch brought Daniel before King Nebuchadnezzar, the troubled, tired king asked Daniel, Can you tell me what I saw in my dream? Daniel replied, No one could tell you this, but there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. He showed me your dream and what it means. Daniel told the king, God showed you the future through your dream. In your dream, you saw a statue with a head of gold, chest and arms of silver, belly and thighs of bronze, legs of iron, and feet of iron mixed with clay. Then a rock smashed the statue. The rock became a mountain that filled the whole earth. You, king, are the head of gold, and every other part of the statue are the kingdoms that will come after you. The rock represents a kingdom that God will establish that will last forever. King Nebuchadnezzar bowed before Daniel and showed him great honor for all that God had spoken through him. The king said, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings, the one who can reveal the greatest of mysteries. For his service, King Nebuchadnezzar promoted Daniel to a high position and placed him in charge of all the wise men. At Daniel's request, the king also promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to rule over all the provinces of Babylon. It's time for show and tell. I want to tell you about an instrument that brings me joy. Oh, I didn't see you there. Hi, my name is Landon. This is a didgeridoo. And I'm going to teach you how to play it and all about it. So, you play it like this. You, um, like when you do this. You do it exactly inside the didgeridoo. And then it'll either go high or low. And when you go both, it's mostly how you play it. And sometimes there's like a little boing which is really cool. And the Aborigines played this 50,000 years ago. And you see about these colors, these also tell you the story of Australia. Like these might be suns, then the sand, which is in the deserts. And it tells a whole story that you don't know. Even in when you play it, it tells a story about Australia. And this part right here, it looks weird, and it's bee wax, beeswax. It looks very weird, and when you put it to your mouth, it feels weird too. And when you're done playing it, it's like um, this circle goes around, and it feels really weird after a while. And yeah, so that's the beeswax right there. See it? Yep. That is the beeswax right there. It looks pretty weird. It feels pretty weird too. And when you feel it, it's like a, you feel a hard solid thing, but it's actually really soft. 
when you try to like wipe it down, it might squish it and it's not good anymore. So you have to use a wipe and softly move it around to clean it. And this is the didgeridoo right here. Thanks. And then this is another thing, how to play. Thanks for watching. Bye. Let's sing to God. It's story time in the New Testament. After a long day of teaching, Jesus and his disciples were getting ready to head back home. They got into their boat to sail across the lake. But as soon as they pushed off from shore, a whispering wind grew into a blustering storm. Without warning, huge waves swelled up like moving mountains, pushing the boat up and down. The disciples were terrified and thought the boat was about to sink. The disciples' fear grew more intense as they realized that the storm was getting bigger. They grabbed onto anything that provided stability. As all of this was taking place, Jesus was sound asleep inside the boat. The disciples forgot that they were in the company of Jesus, who had power of all the elements, even deadly storms. One of the disciples decided to check on Jesus and found him asleep. Even with the raging storm wreaking havoc to the boat, Jesus was calm. They needed his help. Teacher, his disciples shouted in his ear, don't you care that we're all dying? Jesus calmly stood up and looked at the furious storm. He was not scared. He was not shaken. He didn't even look surprised. Peace! Be still! He shouted into the raging, blinding blackness of the storm. Then, suddenly, the growling and snapping of the storm stopped. With scarcely another drip, the rain was gone. The clouds scurried away. The sea settled into a peaceful pane of glass, and the fear of dying was gone. Jesus saved them. With shock, they looked around at the absolute calmness of everything. Jesus had simply spoken, and the storm was gone. The terrifying fear of the storm was replaced by a reassuring fear of Jesus. Who is this that even the wind and sea obey him? they asked in wonder. Yet again, Jesus proved to them that he was the Son of God, and their faith grew stronger. Let's get 
get up and move around. Hi everyone. Today we learned that God revealed to Daniel King's Nebuchadnezzar dream and that helped the king's faith to believe in God. We also learned that Jesus calmed the raging storm that scared the disciples. And that also increased the disciples' faith. So today's lesson was that witnessing God's power will make you strong. So let's get strong today again. Stand up. Today we're gonna play Simon Says. You guys ready? All right, Simon Says, touch your head. Simon says, cross your arms, touch your feet. Oh, I didn't say Simon says, Simon says, touch your thighs. Simon says, touch your feet. Simon says, fall down. We just described the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had of this statue. Now Simon says, stand back up. Simon says, sit down. Simon says, go to sleep. Oh, pretend go to sleep. So who is sleeping? Jesus, okay, good. Simon says, wake up. Simon says, stand back up. Good, Simon says, run in place. I like to imagine the disciples were running like this to wake up Jesus. Simon says, stop. Simon says, give yourself a hand of applause. Good job, everybody. See you all next week. Bye. Okay, time to test that knowledge. It's time for Bible quiz. Okay, it's time to test our knowledge with the Bible quiz. Who appeared with Jesus transfigured? Elisha and David, Joshua and Daniel, or Moses and Elijah? There's Jesus. Do we remember who was with him? Hmm. Moses and Elijah. Jesus was crucified at Golgotha, Gethsemane, or Gomorrah. Where was that? Hmm. Golgotha. Who helped Jesus carry his cross? Simon of Cyrene, Peter of Bethsaida, or Saul of Tarsus? Do we remember the man that was helping him? Simon of Cyrene. Jesus rose from the dead after 30 days, three days, or three hours. If you think about Easter, does that give you any hints? Three days. Jesus was found by his parents where? The Jordan River, the Mount of Olives, or the temple? Remember, he was talking with some gentlemen at the temple. The woman washed Jesus' feet with what? River water, frankincense, or tears? Wow, what a beautiful gesture. It was tears. The first words of the Lord's Prayer are, Our Father, be still or fear not. I'm sure you've all said this prayer at least a handful of times. Our Father. The prodigal son was forced to eat dog food, pig food, or goat food. Hmm. What's that in the picture? Does that give us any hints? You got it, pig food. Congratulations! That was our Bible quiz! Good job, everyone! We had so much fun learning with you today. If you're looking for more fun based on today's lesson, please click the link below for more activities. 
We can't wait to see you again next Sunday. And don't forget, Jesus loves you. See you next week.